Evening everyone, welcome back, day number three. I thought it was Tuesday day for some reason, but um, anyway, it's not one day ahead. So, uh, day number three, and um, today we're going to go through multiplying content. And, you know, this is where the, I guess, the, the systems and the processes start to kick in. Um, there have been about four or five years left videos on the group, so uh, still quite short of the... 50 odd people that were on last night. So some people still got a bit of stage fright, but that's okay. Um, you know, it is a first draft, a learning curve, and you've got to get comfortable with these things. For anybody that's maybe not comfortable putting the videos out in the open space just yet, what I would recommend is just shooting some videos on your phone and watching them back. And, you know, just getting comfortable with, with, you know, listening to your own voice on video and seeing yourself and your mannerisms, which you don't normally see. But, and then when, once you get comfortable with that and you start perfecting it a bit more, then obviously you, you, you should be able to get more comfortable putting out there. But as I say all the time, imperfect action is better than no action. So the sooner you can do it, the better. You are going to need to shoot videos to be able to go through with the next stage of this. Uh, which I'm going to go through tonight, and then that will going to help you repurpose your content onto loads of different channels. But, you know, it is a learning curve, and, um, you know, all credit to those that, you know, put themselves out there, jumped on and, and, and put a video up in, in a group. You've done what, you know, probably 95 99% of people will never do because they're so, you know, afraid of what other people might think. Now, if you want to make a difference in your business and you want to make a difference in your life, you've really not got to give a fuck what anyone else thinks. And you know, I'm quite passionate about that because I see so many people getting held back by what others think. And if they could just get rid of that, they move so much further and they go so much faster. And that's why it's really important to surround yourself with the right people who are going on the same journey. You know, and that's why I put all my students into communities where they're all heading for the same thing and they all complement each other, you know, and that works incredibly well. That's why I network in certain places now. That's why I don't bother with some of my older friends now, you know, because they're not a good fit for me anymore, you know, and that's life. And you've got to sometimes wake up and you've got to sometimes just make those decisions. You know, if you're allowed, if you're letting somebody hold you back because of, you know, what they might write on your post, then they are not the right person for you to be networking with or hanging around with or even having in your life. Okay. So bit of a, um, Bit of motivation there for you and, and you know a bit of reality check of what you're going to need to do if you do want to push through this if you are maybe you know a bit fearful of doing that uh, but you know trust me you're going to need to do it i mentioned yesterday i do think videos are going to become the marketing tool of the future if they aren't already really uh, so you're going to have to get you're going to have to get good at it you know and uh, it takes time it takes practice uh, everyone that's done a fantastic first draft i thought they were all great and um you know well done for doing that so so the first part of today, so day three, is about multiplying content. What I mean by that is we're going to take one piece of content, which was the video. And, you know, as we've built through this, we've got our scripts, we've got our videos, and then we've shot our video and we've got to this point. So what's next? How do we multiply content? Okay. So there's a wonderful tool called Rev.com. If you haven't heard of it, what you can basically do is you can upload your videos and you can upload your audio files as well. So if you don't want to shoot videos, but you do want to get a lot of content down, then you can upload audio files. And they will, uh, basically, it goes off to um, a call center in, um, I don't know, I think it's India or Pakistan or somewhere like that. And they will type your video and they come back extremely quick, and very professional, and they pretty much word for word are written. Uh, obviously, there's a few mistakes every now and then, but that's fine because what we do is we cut it up anyway. So, but we get the bones of it. So, if I shoot a 13 minute video, I can upload it, and within about 10 minutes, I'll have that back transcribed on a, on a Word document, which we then download and then we take into uh, multiple, multiple um, streams uh, and we, we repurpose it. And it is just such a great tool so first thing is take your video and then put it into rev.com and get it transcribed now what do we do with it so where do we put it we've got instagram which is typically a picture format based platform with video at the minute video creeping in more and more but i would say the majority of it is probably 75 percent videos and then the base content of the of the story i think you're allowed something like 300 words and then you allow 30 hashtags. 
Really important that they are keyword driven and that your hashtags are also searchable driven because that's how you get recognized. That's how you build your profiles. That's how you get into people's worlds and they start to see your content. We've then got TikTok. TikTok is something that I've just recently gone on to. Been, um, I had a little go but a while ago, didn't really understand it, thought it was to just the kids. And uh, I'm clearly, unfortunately, not a kid anymore. So I didn't really do anything with it. But the more I hear about it, the more I see what's going on and the more I kind of, I'm always keeping my eye on what's the next big, big thing for marketing. I think that's really important to try and stay ahead of the game. Uh, I probably should have committed to it about six, seven months ago when I initially set the account up. Didn't, only posted a few videos. But I have been back on and uh, we are going to start playing in this field. It is crazy the number of views that these videos are getting out there. You know, property people with like 200,000, 300,000, sometimes millions of views on very simple, very basic videos. So TikTok is definitely going to be a strategy that we're going to start or have started already, uh, albeit just recently putting content out on. If you're one of the cool kids already and you're already on the platform and you've already got a presence on there, great, start leveraging it. Facebook groups. I am a massive fan of Facebook. Like, I couldn't thank Mark Zuckerberg enough. I've built my entire business on Facebook. It started on Facebook. It continues to grow on Facebook. And as long as they'll still have me, I will continue to use it on Facebook. So Facebook for the entrepreneurs and, and the, the people who understand how it works is a business media platform. It is today's newspaper. So you know you can use it in so many different ways. Most people, 90, 95% of people use it as a social platform. They use it for networking and they mainly use it for, you know, showing screenshots of their food and, you know, other things like that, that don't really do anything for them. Networking with their friends that they've maybe not seen since school, things like that. They don't really, they're not in tune with it as a business platform. We live in this bubble where we've got some really cool groups, you know, the property groups, obviously my group, uh, other groups that are, that are out there as well, which are awesome and allows us to network. So we kind of come, come into this little property bubble and we end up living in it. So we, we forget about what it was once like. But for the best part of, you know, since Facebook launched and probably 10 years after that, you know, I was like the masses and just, you know, socialized on it, you know, spent hours on it and like everyone else does. But switch your frame of mind on Facebook, start using it as a real business marketing tool, get rid of all the people that aren't going to benefit your um, business or your life and start, start promoting yourself on, and, and your business is on this. So we've got Facebook groups, we've got a Facebook page, which obviously you can promote and you have your own Facebook profile. I personally get more off my Facebook profile than I get off my Facebook page. And I also um, get a lot from my Facebook groups and continue to grow those groups. And I also get a lot from other people's Facebook groups. So, but with other people's Facebook groups, there's a strategy in that to make sure you A, don't get kicked out and B, you don't become just a douchebag that's just pitching stuff and not adding any value. You know, we've talked about it all week about the level of pitching versus, you know, the level of content that you've just got to deliver. And it should be around an, a, a 20, 80 ratio. So 20% pitching for every 80% worth of content that you deliver. So that's how you've got to perform. But if you do it correct and you, you know, you, the post that we wrote on day one, and then how we're going to multiply the content on the videos from the titles that we did yesterday, and obviously future titles that you'll put together, future content posts that you'll put together from your content tree, you can then start to put this valuable content in all of these places. And I'm going to show you how to do that today and tomorrow. And you know, it becomes a real powerful marketing tool for you and your business. Obviously we've got emails. So from the content we, we create, we can do email blasts through, you know, various CRM platforms, uh, loads of great ones. I personally use active campaign and it works incredibly well for us. You do have YouTube. You can set up a YouTube channel very easily. You can start posting content on there. To give you an idea of how powerful YouTube is, I had Jack from um, on, on my podcast from down South Coast, I believe he lives. And he has, at the time of the podcast, about six months ago, he has 14,000 views on his YouTube channel. He actually gets paid now off YouTube for various marketing, sponsored ads, things like that, because he's, he's over that 10,000 uh, subscriber mark. He has one property. He's done nothing but one BRR deal, but he documented the whole journey. 
and his YouTube channel blew up. You know, he now gets invites. He's now got JV partners wanting to work with him. He's got investors wanting to work with him because he's only a young kid, you know, but he put his net out, out there. He documented his journey and he shot some great YouTube videos. And, you know, now he's what you would say YouTube star. I know how hard it is to build a YouTube channel. It's something that I haven't massively focused on. But even since we have started focusing on it, it takes a long time to build it unless you can get some quick traction on videos. But he nailed it. He got consistent with it. And, and then it started to scale and take off. You know, but don't expect to get instant results from it. Use it as a platform that you commit to, you turn up daily and, you know, you, you, you post your videos on. Blogs, you can obviously repurpose your video content or your, you know, and, and put it on the blogs in various different ways. You can write it, you can break it down. And again, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. LinkedIn, another great platform. So LinkedIn is probably more of a business tool. So I certainly use my LinkedIn profile more for trying to attract developers and investors and sort of networking in that circle as opposed to uh, Facebook, which is um, a bit more for my personal profiles, more for the coaching side of the business and, um, you know, helping you, helping you guys you know, move forward on your journey. And then the Facebook page for the company is kind of where I use the, for, for growing the, the property company business. Whereas my LinkedIn profile, I use more to probably grow the uh, property side of the business. And we have strategies behind the scenes to do that, to connect with the right people um, using, you know, they've got some awesome tools. But ultimately, I have to be delivering the content to keep in people's feeds, to, you know, the right hashtags, the right keywords, the right, you know, written articles. So it's, you know, it, it's, it grabs the attention and we're talking, you know, a bit like the cold and the warm and the hot stuff that we talked about yesterday. It's got to be, you know, grabbing attentions. It's going to be bringing people into my world, getting them into the, the messenger inbox. And then obviously we can have a conversation about how we could potentially be a good fit. And that's all we're trying to do here with all this, you know, amount of marketing. And, and everyone will have different ways of using it. You know, you will have different ways of using it. I'm not saying... Facebook profile can't be used to your property business because that's how I started. You know, I did start with my Facebook profile was my property business, you know, for the best part of probably two years. And, you know, it's only probably in the last year that it's shifted. Um, but I, what I have done is I haven't stopped it. I've just shifted it and I've moved it to something that serves me better. Developers and high net worth investors, they play on LinkedIn. So the natural shift is to go from, you know, the, the, the single dwelling type landlords that will hang around on Facebook to where the developers are hanging out because that's how my business has gone, you know, as we're, as we're scaling. So you, you, you will have a shift as you go through, but you know, you, you, as a starting point, Facebook for me is an absolutely incredible tool. And finally, Instagram stories, which ties us back in Instagram, little 15 second stories. You would be surprised on the number of views Instagram stories get versus your uh, content that you post as pictures. Instagram stories are very, very powerful and you should be using them every single day. You know, sometimes you should be dropping as many as 15 to 20 Instagram stories on some days, especially if you're, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you've got a day, view, a day booked of viewings, you know, literally 15, 15 seconds on every viewing, just, you know, I'm here, bam, 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 next one, driving, you know, stopping for a Starbucks, whatever it might be. Just document like the, the day in the life of a, a property investor, you know, doing doing that, doing that search and doing that deal source of stuff like that really captures people's attention, you know, and then it really helps you get out there with Instagram stories as well. You can do quirky little 15 second videos it might just help that confidence level with shooting the bigger videos, you know, so it all is just this sort of building of this mental toughness to get on video. I know how daunting video is and that's why I keep going on about it. So, Again, if anyone's got any questions, please just bang them in the chat or wait till the end and bang them in the chat and we'll come on to them. Um, the type of posts that we, we do. So there's various different types of posts that we can do and we should then split this one piece of content in. So rev.com is gonna produce us a transcript. So to start off with, we had to do the video and then we've rev.com it and we've got the transcript. Now it's about how we repurpose it across all the channels that we've just discussed and then what type of posts we can come up with from that one transcript. So first one is quote cards. When you have your transcript in front of you, just get a highlighter out, go down this transcript and just 
highlight anything that you feel you've said that could be a quote. Could be a sentence, could be a couple of words together. And you'd be surprised how many quotes you can actually pull out of a transcript of a video, especially if it's a you know 13 minute long video. So what you'd then do is you'd create a quote card in Canva, very simple quote card, you know, just jump on my Instagram, you'll see them all the time. And they are just pulled from some of the videos I've done and some of the stuff that I've said. Uh, same for the Luke Holmes Instagram or the Luke Holmes Facebook page. Um, you'll see quotes on there and that's some videos that I've done and we're just, you know, those quotes have come out during those videos. So that's, that's step number one uh, of one type of content that you can create for your social media. You can then use those quote cards in multiple different channels, uh, multiple different times, as, as many, as many, as much or as little as you want, basically. And you'll find your feet with it, what's resonating, what's not resonating. You can get quite clever with the quote cards that you can actually then pull some more of the transcript out as either a post uh, for the description element. If you're going to put a quote card as a picture on Instagram, for example, you could then pull out more of a condensed bit of the transcript in the description with some good hashtags to try and just toughen that post up, give, give it more strength and make sure that it gets more engagement. Because everything we're doing here is just about engagement. You know, I'm not saying this is going to instantly generate leads and people say, oh, yep, yeah, I'm in, sign me up for your service. It's just we're, we're building that engagement. We're getting that consistency. We're doing it on a daily basis. And, you know, we're getting through to people in the cold, the warm and the hot audience phases. Next bit is top tips. So, again, very similar to your quote cards. You will go through your transcript and you're looking for kind of top tips. So, even if it's not a five things you must know about, you know, renting to a, land, a, a, a bad tenant or something like that, you, you, you will still naturally start coming out with some top tips that, you know, are basically the benefits of your service. You can snip them into top tips. You can put them as a, um, just a simple transcribed document with a bit of extra wording around it to make it flow. You can pull them out and put them in there sort of quote card type styles. Um, you could, you know, condense it right down. If you have a video producer or a good video editing software, you could potentially cut out the sections of the video that you have your top tips and condense a 32, a 30 minute video down to two minutes and then put that on IGTV. You could potentially condense it down to 15 seconds per tip, bang it on Instagram stories. So this is why you've got, this is how you, this is how you repurpose content, you know, and it's from, it all starts with a video and then you take it and you just then can do so many different things with it. Next thing is obviously if you want to start a YouTube channel, you could, and then you could, you know, use your video as a how to your video doesn't have to be a how to, by the way, you just create a thumbnail and it basically leads them down that, that direction. And then your video talks about whatever your video talks about, you know, so if it was, you know, the five things that landlord must know about tenants, you know, you could then just change the title, have a thumbnail on, on YouTube, you know, and it could be like how to avoid bad tenants if you're a landlord, but then the video is still the same, you know? So and that again is just then repurposing that one video that you've shot to use for a transcript. You just publish that on YouTube with a different thumbnail and just let it roll. You know, the good thing about YouTube is it's there forever. So, you know, as long as again, you've got a good description, you've got some good keywords, uh, some good hashtags in there, then you will get in the searches of the YouTube uh, search engine and you'll come up. Now you've probably heard this a million times before, but now, Google shifted quite a few years ago where it used to have the three sponsored ads on the top and then it used to have the sponsored ads down the side where Google AdWords people would pay for. They've got rid of the three at the top now and the Google AdWords typically just sit down the right hand side and you'll notice if you haven't already you'll notice next time you go on Google and search something that top bit that sits above the website searches is videos and those videos all come from YouTube. So if you can create impactful videos when someone's saying, you know, how does rent to rent, to rent work? Say it's a landlord and he types into Google, how does rent to rent work? Can't even say it. <laughs> um, then your video could potentially come up, clicks on your video, ends up in your inbox, or he ends up watching you. He then goes on your Facebook page, investigates your profile, looks at your Instagram, sees your Instagram stories of all the viewings you did the other week. 
all of a sudden he's in your world and he's getting more and more interested. It only takes the next video or the next quote card or the next top tip and go, I need to speak to this. Now, and that could happen over a stage of events, you know. Typically, somebody has to have something like seven to nine touch points with a business before they will purchase. It's very rare that someone will just have one touch point and then go, okay, I'm ready to buy. Maybe on a lower ticket item, but not on a bigger ticket item. And if, if a landlord wants to rent you their property or sell you their property, um, you know, or if you want to do deals with JV partners or, you know, uh, attract investor finance, that's not going to happen on a one, a one touch point. That's going to be multiple touch points. And that's all you're trying to do with your marketing. Next one is a value add email broadcast. So, you know, I talk about this value add all the time, you know, giving a lot away, 80% of your stuff's just giving mass amounts of value out there so that people, when they're good and ready, will respond. 20% of it can be a pitch. So for every 10 emails you send out, two of them can be a straightforward pitch of bang, 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 and this is what we can do for you, and this is how you get it. For the rest of it, just go on your transcripts, have a look at it, pull out some good paragraphs, piece them back together. You know, you might not want a 30 minute video written down on an email would be a long email. So, you know, you just want to pull the core elements out of it, the value add that it's going to give, uh, put a few emojis in there and put it in your email database and then send it to your list. And this is why it's really important to be building a list of landlords, of estate agents, of um, developers, of investors all the time and also have them segmented out. So when you want to do a value-add email broadcast, which is for, um, say, for, for me, for, if I want to get a developer's block often to manage on and talk to them about service accommodation, a lot of developers might not know about service accommodation. So I will do a value-add about the capital allowances available on service accommodation for investors who are developing blocks of flats in X location. That could be the email. And then, you know, from the video that I, that I shot, I'll it is. and then we'll just, oh, Zach, just mute. It is. We good? Can you all hear me? Yeah, cool. Um, someone was getting shouted at. Anyway, um, so yeah, so you can, you can put um, a good email together and you can broadcast it to that one developer's list because obviously you wouldn't want to broadcast that to everybody. You've got the more you can segment and the more you can be more targeted with your emails, the, the better response rates you're going to get. So long posts is pretty much as it says. So your video, not really condensed down that much. You'll just maybe take the, a few bits and bobs out of it and put it out there as a long post. Uh, you can, with all these long posts, you can um, put emojis in it, give it a bit of effect. One tip with emojis though, especially with Facebook, is don't use too many because it does actually reduce the algorithm reach, so it will show your posts to less people. But good emojis in the right place just really bring a post to life. And same with any Facebook ads that you're doing, you know, in the description element, it does reduce it if you fill it full of emojis. But if you have them in the right place, it can really just make that difference and make it stand out. Next one, short posts, the exact opposite of long posts. So you're just going to pull out, you know, maybe a paragraph's worth of content from your video that, you know, tries to condense the whole video into one paragraph. And again, you've then got a short post. By the way, if you want any examples of this type of stuff, just jump all over my stuff and you'll see it. We do this day in, day out. You know, if you haven't seen it already, then, you know, have a look. If you have seen it but haven't noticed, now you'll probably start to notice, you'll probably see some posts tomorrow and you'll be like, oh, well, that's a short post, that's a long post, you know, that's a top tip. So it's, um, it's all structured in the right way and, you know, it works. Uh, Instagram stories, again, you can use uh, quotes from your transcript or you could, as I said before, you can reduce the video down to a very quick 15 seconds. Maybe it's just a key point in that video and you can post them as an Instagram story. And obviously, you've then got Facebook videos as well. So you can condense a Facebook video should be anywhere from about one to three minutes, typically. So if you've got a 30-minute video, you need to get it cut down to one to three minutes. And then what you might do is you might then pad that video out with a bit more of a description about the video from the transcribed 
uh, part of the video so that you can actually add some more content into that video. So they're typically the types of posts that you should be doing. And if you're consistent with this and you're consistent with your videos and creating them, you will have so much content that you will not know what to do with it. Uh, but the good news is I'm going to give you a quick peek into how we can do it. And also tomorrow I'm going to give you um, basically my content machine, uh, as I like to call it. And if I didn't have that, I'm not sure what I would do without it. It keeps us all in sync and it makes sure that we take anything from an idea all the way through to production scheduled and then repurposed as well. So uh, that template, um, I'm going to see if I can actually save it as a template to give to you on Friday, along with all the other bits and bobs that I've got. And then you can kind of just plug that in and use it as well. But when we are, um, when we are shooting these videos and um, or you're out and about, I collect a lot of lifestyle images. I take it to a different level now where I will actually like, go on a photo shoot day and I'll take a photographer with me and we'll go and shoot photos all over the place. Or if I'm going on a video production day, because uh, I'll do a video production day and then that's me done pretty much for, for six months to a year's worth of content unless I want to add things in. So I, I just basically rock it out in one day and then I hand it over to my team. Obviously, I'm blessed that I've got the team now, but I did have to do all this myself at the beginning. So, you know, I have been in your shoes. But if you, even as daft as, you know, getting your partner, getting your kids, getting whatever, and just getting them to take some photographs of you in various different lifestyle settings. And then you can actually add a lot of the lifestyle images will support some of the short posts or the long posts, um, you know, and, you know, as you can see here, we've got the quote cards going on and, um, and then obviously the lifestyle images above them in the descriptions, they will have short posts or long posts from the video transcripts based on, the cold, warm or hot titles that I chose and then the videos that I shot from that. So, you know, they, it all ties in. It all ties in. And the more you tie it in, the easier it becomes. And then you, once you put a system around it all, you know, I am massive on systems and processes because I don't think you can scale a business to dizzy heights unless you've got systems and processes in place from an early stage. So I'm all about it. I'm all about automation. And that's what we try and do. Every part of the business is just make it as streamlined as possible. So we can, you know, get the content out there. We're not having to scratch around and think, oh, what content do I need to post there? Oh, I haven't got that picture, but I'm not dressed, so I can't go and shoot one. You know, this and that. We're prepared, you know. And, um, you know, I think the saying, failure to prepare, prepare to fail, whatever it is, you know, it's so true. You know, so we're never scratching around for content. We've always got far too much content, but that's great because we'll just continue to, to pick it out of the queue and then we take it through the various stages. Everyone takes ownership of it and we get it created. So start getting your cameras out, start getting people to follow you like you're a uh, superstar and getting popped. And, um, you know, it is quite funny when someone's taking photos of you in some back alley in Gateshead and you've got a suit on, you know, and they're wondering what the hell you're doing. But, um, you know, you, you quite quickly get over that and uh, you just crack on and, and get it done. But to start off with, you know, you'll be able to get a lot of lifestyle images from just, you know, probably your phone. You've probably got a lot already. You know, if you just sifted through your phone and just pulled them into a folder, you'd probably have a lot already to start off with. So, um, something to think about. So the final part for tonight is kind of a planning system. So I am going to give you all these breakout documents, but as I said, I've got a template, to, um, which I'm going to try and get for you tomorrow, see if I can save it. And hopefully that'll help. Um, and that is not on Google Sheets, by the way. That's on a, a, a platform uh, that we use. But in essence, from the video title, we create four quotes. We then have a Facebook profile post, Facebook, bang, bang, bang. And we, we have a system. So this is kind of the basics of the system. And then the system goes into a software. And then the software is kind of how we go from idea all the way through the scheduling. So I'm going to give you all these documents um, and then you'll be able to start, you know, planning it out. Because if you're not organized, you, you seriously can't do, um, you seriously can't do this game. Like you cannot market if you're not organized or you'll never have enough content to post, you know, or if you've got enough content and you're not organized, you'll end up posting the same things twice in a row or you'll just like miss things or you, you've got to be organized with it. And as I said, if you want a scalable business, especially a business that you ultimately are not working in operationally, 
Now, hopefully you're getting to, to, to hear the way I'm talking now. Like I do not operate my business. You know, I leave that to my team, but I did have to operate it at the beginning and I had to put the systems and processes in place that worked for them, but also worked for me so I can still monitor what's going on to be able to make sure that the systems and the processes are working and the business is still moving forward. So it's really important to, to, to get this ironed out in your head from day one. You know, when I talk to my students about, you know, setting up service accommodation businesses, the minute they get their first one, I'm like, start documenting what you're doing because eventually you're going to pass that over to somebody. It's better to do it now than do it when you're busy with five or 10 properties and you've got a lot of other things to do, you know, do it now. And they're a bit like, well, you know, and honestly, it's the, be the best advice I can give you start documenting your systems out from day one. So final bit, obviously if quite a few is didn't do a video. So you're going to have to go and do your video once you've done it bang it in the Facebook profile group if you feel uncomfortable. If not, no worries at all. Um, you know, just trust it and get comfortable with it. Honestly, it's, it's, it's a great thing and it's a, um, it is a powerful tool. If you have done it or you have done one in secret and you haven't put it out in the public, then put it through rev.com um, and then get your transcript and then I'd like you to choose three quotes and I'd like you to post them in the group under the homework task. And uh, you'd be, the, the idea of this is that to, to surprise you about, you know, that you will actually come up with quotes. Most people think, oh, well, quotes are only for like, you know, legendary famous people and, you know, politicians and da, 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 presidents and things like that. But when you start speaking into a video and giving advice and, and adding value, you, you do tend to come out with like quirky quotes and, you know, some of them are great. So that's the idea of this. Um, get it posted in the group and, um, and yeah, and I'll, I'll take some questions now if anybody does have any. Just, I have two businesses, a training and personal development business and a property sourcing business. I have a business profile for each on Instagram and then I have a personal brand Insta so far, I've just used personal on top. Personal development stuff. I don't really know where they should talk probably on that page too. Oh, will that confuse people and should I? Um, my good friend, Dick Sesh, who I had on my podcast this morning or this afternoon, he is a property developer and a personal fitness coach. So he does both very well, blends the two very well together. And, um, you know, I think there's, there's no... There's no shame in, you know, mixing businesses up. I think, you know, at the end of the day, it shows that you're a serial entrepreneur and that's fantastic. Uh, you've just got to get the blend of content right. So make sure that you're, um, so you'll see on my profile. So, you know, obviously I have my coaching business and I also have my property business and I try and kind of mix the two up on my profile still. So, you know, I still, um, it might, sometimes I might just share stuff from Luke Holmes page for my property side of things, but then sometimes I will, you know, just put property stuff out there. You know, um, I think this week we've got stuff about, you know, videos from Dubai and things like that coming up. Cause obviously we're pushing hard over there and, you know, so it's a mixture of both. And, um, as I say all the time, you know, put it out there and the people will tell you whether it's good or not. You know, the people will engage and like it and comment on it if they, if they like it, if they don't like it, they'll not do that. So, it's really, you know, just listen to what the market's telling you, but I wouldn't have any problem in doing it. What I do find with, and I did this at the beginning and um, something to think about if you, and I'm still actually tweaking with it on my personal profile, but um, the Luke Holmes one, I think I've got nailed, but the appearance of your Instagram feed, try and make it look as professional as you possibly can. You know, I've got to don't just post random content. Like you'll start to see there's like a structure between how we post stuff now. There's an order of things. Um, you can, there is an app you can actually like post your Instagram stuff to and it'll actually show you what your feed's going to look like ahead of time. But, you know, you don't need to go to the depths of that. But when you are mixing brands, I would have, make sure you, you, you have your schedule. So are you going to go sort of, property post, fitness post, property post, fitness post, or are you going to do three fitness posts, three property posts, three, you know, so you want to, you want to have it a bit in sync rather than just random, 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 random. And there's no real theme to the, to the channel and probably the same on your, 
on your Facebook profiles. Um, obviously, naturally, you'd probably have two different pages. So it is just a case of kind of working with what you've got and sitting and seeing what comes from it. That would be kind of my advice on that one. Do I use paid Facebook, Google ads? If so, what stage would you recommend to use it? If not, why? Um, I do and I don't. I go on and off with it, depending on where we are business-wise, how far behind our targets we are. I use the, uh, the I have had some very, very successful rent-to-rent -rent campaigns where I was generating leads for about two pounds and generated a lot of them and that, that created a lot of deals for us which was good a great return on investment on that much better than sort of your landlord letters that many people teach to use the i have also had some bad ones you know where leads were up sort of 25 pound 26 pound a lead so you know it just depends on on the market what i will do now is i will i think as you become more of an authority in your space I'll do kind of Facebook ads now to lead people into a, say like, I think the last one I did a developers webinar about three weeks ago uh, where we got, you know, we, we targeted developers and investors on Facebook and then I ran a webinar to them and uh, we're doing the same in Dubai on May the 4th, I think it is. So right now we've got stuff uh, targeting that sort of funnel. And that works for me because then I get on, you know, get on a, a Zoom call like this and I present to them the services. So that's kind of with Facebook ads, there, there are a few ways to do it. Obviously, you can just do a straight lead form and get a lead and you get a number and you ring them. The quality of that will really depend on how targeted your audience is, how good your messaging is, how clear your messaging is. You know, even if we just think back to, the task that I set you on day one about writing a post. Um, most people, you know, well, all people had a fantastic start at it, but there were some where I commented on to say, you know, I think that you've, you've nailed it in terms of the sections, but I'm a bit unclear what your service is. So if you're running a, a Facebook ad and, and you're thinking, okay, I've written that well and, and each point's great, but I'm not sure what your service is, I might click on it and fill a lead in, and that's going to cost you money, but then the, you ring them up and they're like, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about, or I haven't got a property, or you know, I've got no money, or whatever it might be. So it, it, it's not as straightforward as kind of, yes or no. I've probably spent, I don't know, the thick end 25 grand on mentorships around Facebook paid ads and Facebook marketing and just, you know, that sort of thing. So I, I, I feel like I know it quite well, although it is an ever-changing game. Um, you know, so when to use it is probably later on in your journey. I'd say when you've got some good cash flow coming in, probably when you're probably when you've got about five grand net a month coming in, then you could maybe start allocating 10% off to Facebook ads and then you could be testing it. But I would say don't go into that lightly. Um, you could, I would invest. It's like anything, it's like you know, don't just jump into a property strategy without you know getting good education around it. Firstly, you'll make a lot of mistakes and, and you'll cost yourself a lot more money than the training would have cost. Facebook and Google ads is exactly the same. I probably wouldn't recommend Google ads for a while, if at all. You can you can do a lot more with Facebook. I think property leans itself more to Facebook. So especially for the kind of level you're at now whereas i guess once you've scaled a bit more and you maybe want to try and attract some more developers and investors you might then start hitting google because they don't typically hang out on facebook but um for now i would probably just stick with the generic stuff while well, i'm sort of what, what we're talking about here getting getting your posts out and getting your engagement that way for free all your expenses is your time and you know getting getting it all put out there but once it's put out there then you should be fine with that so um, that would be my advice anyway. Any more questions before we shoot off? Put a one in the chat if you've enjoyed so far and you think that your business is going to move forward. Cool, cool, cool. So tomorrow is... Uh, the penultimate day and tomorrow for me is the, uh, the 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 golden goose or whatever they call it the, the piece de resistance i'm gonna give you my content machine now this is a system i've worked hard on and um 
it, it really works very, very well. So I would encourage you um, to make sure you are here for that. And then on Friday, I'm going to show you how it all pieces together so you can actually start, you know, monetizing it and scaling very quickly. So, um, so we'll be back again tomorrow at seven. Obviously, your homework task will be up in the Facebook group in about five minutes time. And shoot your videos, get them revved. I appreciate that rev.com might not get back to everyone quickly. So, you know, uh, just try and get them done before tomorrow night's session. So, you know, I can review a few and, um, you know, I'm glad you're all enjoying it. And uh, I'm sure you'll get plenty, plenty of engagement on your stuff going forward and your businesses will move forward. But we do still have the final two days left and they are the best two days. So I look forward to seeing you on Thursday and Friday. Take care, everyone.